dive into the depths of a gripping tale directed by Steven Spielberg in 1975. A coastal town is terrorized by a relentless shark in this classic Hollywood flick, featuring standout performances with a lot more lurking beneath the surface. Who was your favorite classic Hollywood actor in this nail-biting adventure? As you explore the shocking, funny, and poignant facts that make this movie unforgettable, share your most memorable moments related to the film in the comments below the funny, the shocking, and the sad. What made this cinematic experience truly special for you? Keep those tales coming, we'd love to read them. Were you left on the edge of your seat, or do you have a cherished memory associated with the show? Stay tuned for more intriguing insights into the enduring impact of this iconic piece in all its glory. 45 years later, this film still holds the power to entertain. The movie, directed by Steven Spielberg in 1975, is a testament to the prototypical summer blockbuster. Based on Peter Bensley's best-selling novel, it set the standard for the new Hollywood popcorn blockbuster while frightening millions of moviegoers. The story revolves around the town of Amity Island, where a series of shark attacks lead police chief Martin Brody, ichthyologist Matt Hooper, and shark hunter Quint to embark on a mission to eliminate the killer great white shark. The film showcases flawless acting, direction, and production values. The performances of Roy Scheider, Richard Dreyfuss, and Robert Shaw stand out, creating a captivating ensemble. The chemistry between the characters rivals some of cinema's greatest, making it a film to be treasured. Despite a troubled production marked by budget overruns and delays, Spielberg's decision to limit the sharks on screen presence adds to the suspense. The use of John Williams's orchestral theme, reminiscent of Herman's Psycho, enhances the tension, creating a pulsing heartbeat throughout the film. The narrative follows a familiar B-movie structure, but distinguishes itself with deep characters and a substantial budget. Spielberg's mastery in storytelling, coupled with brilliant shots like Brody looking out the boat window, reflects his skill and awareness of story, setting, and character. Jaws works as a horror movie by tapping into the inherent fear of great white sharks, apex predators with a history of deadly encounters with humans. While the film has faced criticism for portraying sharks negatively and contributing to their endangerment, recent studies suggest that the danger they pose is exaggerated. In the wake of its release, Jaws became immensely popular, spawning sequels and Universal Studios rides. The film's enduring terror and adventure continue to resonate with new generations of fans, instilling a fear of swimming that persists to this day. Let Jaws take a bite out of you. The lighthouse near the beach in the film is an actual one on Martha's Vineyard, where filming occurred. Due to a billboard in the scene, special effects were used in post-production to move the lighthouse. In an unreleased scene during the second beach attack, Brody's son, frozen in terror, is saved by a man who sacrifices himself to divert the shark. Spielberg filmed the intense scene but deemed it too gruesome for the final release. The making of Jaws documentary includes the shot, but it's absent from the DVD's deleted footage or outtake sections. Initially, Richard Dreyfuss turned down the role of Hooper, stating that Jaws was a film he'd love to watch but not make. In an early cut of the film, a startling pop-up scare left Midwestern viewers so shocked that their reactions drowned out Brody's iconic comment. The filmmakers extended the sequence to allow the audience to recover before enjoying the much-needed moment of comic relief delivered by Brody's line. Criticism has surrounded the film's portrayal of sharks, leading to a surge in shark hunting post-release. Shark populations in North America's eastern seaboard significantly dropped after 1975. Both Peter Benchley and Steven Spielberg later regretted the negative impact on sharks' reputation. Benchley became a shark conservationist, acknowledging that sharks don't target humans or hold grudges. Quint's tale of the USS Indianapolis originated from playwright Howard Sackler, expanded by John Milius, and rewritten by Robert Shaw after a disagreement between Benchley and Carl Gottlieb. Shaw presented the text, and Benchley and Gottlieb agreed it was precisely what was needed. These aspects shed light on the film's impact on the audience, its portrayal of sharks, and the development of Quint's gripping narrative. Quint, the seasoned shark hunter in the 1975 film, operated a vessel named Orca. His choice reflected his knowledge that orcas, commonly known as killer whales, stand as the sole predators to the formidable great white shark. Entertainment Weekly recognized the film's chilling impact, ranking Jaws as the sixth scariest movie of all time. 
The unsettling narrative struck a nerve with audiences, cementing its position among the most fear-inducing films in cinematic history. The coastal tranquility of Martha's Vineyard underwent a seismic shift after the film's release. Formerly home to around 5,000 summer tourists, the island's population surged to 15,000 post-Jaws. The movie's gripping portrayal of shark terror left an indelible mark on Martha's Vineyard, transforming it into a bustling destination for those seeking a brush with the ominous depths. In summary, Quint's boat choice, the film's recognition as a top horror classic, and the profound impact on Martha's Vineyard's tourism exemplify Jaws' enduring influence on popular culture. The movie's ability to captivate audiences and reshape perceptions remains a significant chapter in cinematic history, showcasing the power of a compelling narrative. The model shark used in the film Jaws faced early challenges, sinking on its first day of use and requiring extensive maintenance. Despite its lackluster appearance, Steven Spielberg, the director, turned this setback into an advantage, opting to emphasize suspense by showing the shark sparingly. Spielberg remarked, it's what we don't see which is truly frightening. When casting for the role of Matt Hooper, Kevin Klein was offered the part but suggested someone he knew for the role. Spielberg insisted on authenticity, stating, I want someone who is an oceanographer, highlighting the importance of genuine expertise in the film. The film's third act was predominantly shot handheld, leading Spielberg to humorously dub Jaws as the most expensive handheld movie ever made. This unconventional approach added intensity to the scenes and contributed to the film's overall impact. These behind-the-scenes insights into Jaws, from the challenges with the model shark to the insistence on authenticity in casting and the unique filming techniques, offer a glimpse into the pragmatic and creative decisions that shape the iconic thriller, showcasing Spielberg's ability to overcome obstacles and deliver a gripping cinematic experience. On the DVD documentary, Spielberg shared that his initial plan for introducing the shark involved a night scene at the dock. The harbor master, watching TV, would reveal boats rising and falling, indicating the massive shark underneath. However, logistical challenges and the malfunctioning shark led to the scene's shelving, much to Spielberg's disappointment. Composer John Williams initially played a score that made Spielberg laugh. Without Williams' score, Spielberg believed the movie would be only half as successful, jump-starting Williams' career. In a biography, Spielberg disclosed that Robert Duvall encouraged him to make the film. Spielberg offered Duvall the role of Brody, but he declined, fearing fame. Duvall, desiring Quint, was deemed too young by Spielberg. These insights, from abandoned scenes to the pivotal role of the score and Robert Duvall's influence, offer a glimpse into the pragmatic decisions shaping the iconic thriller. Peter Benchley, the author, initially considered casting choices for the film, including Robert Redford, Paul Newman, and Steve McQueen. However, the final cast differed from Benchley's initial preferences. John Williams composed the music for the film, earning the score a notable rank as the sixth greatest film score by the American Film Institute. Williams's contribution played a crucial role in the movie's success. Twelve years post-Jaws, Richard Dreyfuss collaborated with Emilio Estevez in the film Stakeout. During breaks, they engaged in amusing inside jokes, quoting lines from movies. One such exchange involved Estevez asking Dreyfus to identify the film with a line, this is no boat accident, adding a playful layer to their interactions. These details shed light on Benchley's casting considerations, the impact of John Williams's music, and the playful camaraderie between Dreyfus and Estevez, offering insights into the behind-the-scenes dynamics of the acclaimed film.